everyone. I uh, just wanted to share some um, updates that we made to uh, Service Fusion so far uh, this month. Uh, we've got more in the works uh, that will be out before the end of September as well as in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but again, I wanted to share what we've done so far because these uh, new features and updates are really exciting. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback from our customers and uh, we can't wait to share more. But uh, again, I wanted to share what we've done so far. Um, you know, I'll start with the most obvious. You'll probably notice that the, um, that the UI has changed. We've updated our UI, we've updated our navigation header. Uh, we've um, also added a feature that allows you to pick your own color scheme. So each user within your uh, company can have their own color scheme. If you wanted to change it to you know, a grapefruit, for example, you can just easily do that. And um, again, it only affects you and uh, no one else within your company. And um, as part of this uh, new update, we've um, just modified and updated a lot of the um, a lot of the color schemes on buttons and uh, you know pop-ups and you know things like that so that it, again just give it a fresher uh, fresher new look. Uh, we've uh, made some improvements to the pictures and documents tab to uh, the way jobs are managed and scheduled uh, as well as to the purchase order and inventory management systems and I'm going to be diving into um, each one of the sections in um, in detail in just a minute. Uh, so one thing that we've um, that we've changed within the navigation menu is that we added you know a lot of shortcuts obviously so you can easily get to your workforce management your communication templates or company preferences with just one click. Uh, we also added some shortcuts here like for example you can add a new customer from the sub menu you can create a new project estimate job dispatch uh, you can go to calendar and create a new task you can go to reports and access one of the frequently run reports all within a single click so. It's all designed to reduce the number of clicks that you perform within the system, which uh, indirectly improves the you know your over, uh, overall experience with the system because it reduces the load on our servers. And uh, and we've already gotten quite a few compliments on the speed improvement uh, within our system from our existing customers. So that's uh, it's really great news. Uh, we also added a brand new feature called Batch Assign and Schedule, and you'll find it under the Jobs menu or under the Dispatch menu. And I'm going to show you how that works in just a minute. We've also made a number of improvements to the Field Worker app, and um, I'm going to show you a slide on that at the end of this um, at the end of this video. Uh, but you should download the app and just try those features yourselves because it's um, it's a lot it's a lot better when you you know when you see it firsthand as opposed to uh, me just showing it to you in a video. Uh, but um, so you know when, when it comes to the admin system, again, uh, a few of the things that we changed um, improve um, you know drastically improve the workflow uh, within the system. So for instance, if you go into the job screen, one of the things we did is we allowed you uh, to uh, not just add, but also manage your photos or job documents or even customer documents from their file right from within the view screen. So you can still do it from the edit screen, but you can also do it from within the view screen. And you can upload multiple photos or multiple files at the same time. So for instance, if I were to go in here and just select all these photos that I wanted to upload, hit open, start upload, and it's going to upload every single photo just like that. And some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. And then these photos are now going to be displayed in a gallery style view as opposed to just the slider that we had before. And it also formats it or scales it based on the screen size. So if you have a smaller screen, it'll shrink the size of those preview images to a smaller size so it doesn't necessarily stretch out the page downwards. It's just going to adjust the size of those preview images. And whenever you're mousing over it, you can just delete it right on the spot. You can add comments to photos now. And you can add as much or as little content here as you'd like. And whenever you click on the preview, you can see the comments down here at the bottom. You can navigate through each photo. And it, again, scales with, you know, depending on what the size of the, uh, the photo is. And you can download it right here from the screen. So before, you used to have to right click, save as. Now you can just simply click this um, uh, icon up here. And it's going to download the photo down to your, uh, to your hard drive, down to your computer. Now the documents tab has also been improved to allow you to not just select and add files from, from the customer's current document vault, but to also add new files right here in the view screen and to preview those documents without having to um, download them to your hard drive first. So you, you know, in other words, you're not using your computer's you know, PowerPoint or Excel or you know, PDF viewer, but you're actually using our preview that's built into the system so you don't have to leave, um, you don't have to leave that job screen at all. Uh, so, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and add a few files from uh, from our uh, you know from my library here. So I'm just going to select a bunch of uh, files that are of different types. So we have a, a Word document, we have a PDF, we have a rich text file, which is you know essentially um, like a WordPad type of a document. We have a sample Excel sheet and even a sample PowerPoint presentation. And um, I'll just go ahead and throw in a uh, throw in a photo here as well. So we'll go ahead and hit open, and then we'll upload those files you know all at the same time. Now they're being added to the customer's document vault. 
and they're being available, uh, they're being made available within the job screen, obviously. So now all I have to do, oh, if, and if I wanted to preview it, all I'd have to do is just click this button here, and it's going to open up a preview window, which will show me the contents of that file. So this is a, you know, a multi-page Word document, basically, and you can see it's one of eight pages. So it's all operating within our uh, within our system, basically. Again, so you don't have to leave the screen. If I wanted to preview this, um, let's just say Excel file, for instance, again. Click the click the preview link or a button. It opens up the Excel sheet and it's all it's all again right here within the preview window. You don't have to do a thing. There's no need to download. Download it multiple times. No need to clog up your hard drive with that. If you wanted to preview a uh, PowerPoint presentation, you can just again simply click the preview, and um, it'll it'll open it up just like as if you were to open it in PowerPoint. Um, only again, you're staying uh, staying within our system. So that's uh, that's a huge huge time saver, especially for uh, for those companies that operate with um, a lot of PDFs or maybe Word documents, some you know work complete order, uh, forms or just really anything anything that that may be attached to to a job. Now can be easily previewed, and you can still download them. So you can still use these buttons here to download those files onto your computer. So if it was uploaded out in the field, and you're working, you need to download it and have a copy of it locally. You can still do all that. You can still rename them just like you used to be able to. Um, you can, you know, obviously delete files, and then you can, you know, re-add them later from the customer's vault. So these are uh, these are some of the new enhancements that we made uh, to the uh, to the document and the, the pictures tabs. Now I'd like to show you uh, a couple of things that we did inside the customer's profile. So um, first of all, we've um, improved the way uh, the customer's equipment is stored and displayed. Uh, so if you go into the equipment tab here, you'll find that um, the, the layout has changed quite a bit. So we're not showing it all in forms. It's actually in uh, some you know, in a sort of a preview format. Uh, but the neat thing about this is that it's easier to, to view, it's easier to work with. It's all uh, searchable, so you can search by you know just about any criteria. You can do it by uh, the equipment name, serial number, manufacturer, um, you know even notes within those fields or custom field data, um, and you can easily see how many jobs this piece of equipment has had since it was installed. So what we do is we use this install date as uh, sort of the starting point, and then uh, from that point forward, we start counting how many jobs were um, associated with this piece of equipment. So if you're speaking to a customer um, and you're booking a job for another repair on this piece of equipment, you can go back and say, Mr. Smith, it you know, looks like we've been out there three times in the past six months. Maybe it's time to consider a replacement. So this is a, you know, gives you a little bit of um, ammo when you, uh, when you speak to customers. And um, then of course, if you wanted to edit uh, this piece of equipment, just click this button here, make all the changes you want. If you wanted to add a new piece, uh, of equipment, then you can go ahead and um, just do it from here right on the spot. And of course, you can still do all of that in the worker app. And uh, inside our worker app, we've also improved the, the way the equipment uh, fields are, um, are stored or managed, uh, where you can also search by a specific uh, piece of equipment by make, model, um, or you know some other details. Um, because you know it used to be just a static drop down. Now it's a searchable drop down. So if a customer has a lot of um, equipment on their file, uh, you can you can you know more easily uh, find the, the, the one that you want. So uh, again, that's that's another major enhancement that we uh, that we made to the uh, to you know to our system in uh, one of these uh, releases in September. Now I'd like to move on to uh, the next section, and this next section is the uh, and this next and uh, the next section would be uh, the batch assign and schedule feature. So this is uh, something that was actually requested by a, a few of our customers, and we've gotten a lot of compliments on this feature since we rolled it out. Um, the uh, the uses f uh, you know for this feature are, are virtually endless. It's uh, it's anything from moving all jobs from you know the past couple of days because you got rained out to the following couple of days, um, assigning all high priority jobs to senior techs, uh, maybe uh, assigning jobs of a certain category or job type to a specific subset of technicians or a crew. Um, or you know prioritizing certain jobs all at the same time, or setting substatuses of you know or, or removing those substatuses, or updating statuses of um, repeating future jobs. Uh, really, just about anything can be done with this feature. And so all you have to do here is, um, for example, you know you, you'd apply uh, some sort of a, a search criteria, whether it's a date range or a customer, and you can choose you can choose multiple uh, multiple statuses or multiple other search criteria. For instance, say if I wanted to show any jobs that are scheduled and dispatched. All I'd have to do is just select those two. If I said, show me everything that's assigned to Jim and uh, Robert, for example, then it'll just show me jobs that are assigned to Jim and Robert and that are dispatched and scheduled. 
or uh, you know, show me everything that's a service job or show me everything that's an install job. Again, you know, criteria is there. You can, you can select as much or as little as you'd like and um, you guys can you know, personalize these filters as you go along. Now, once the results are produced, all you have to do is just check this box, hit the assign and schedule button, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to change only the fields that you'd like to change. In other words, if you wanted to keep all the substatuses as they are now, which is uh, fully processed, for example, then you just leave it unchanged. But if you wanted to change it to, let's just say, um, I don't know, we'll call them parts on order. Then all I have to do is just uh, change this. If you wanted to change all the notes for text for the selected jobs to something else, um, let's just say something else. We'll go ahead and hit save here, apply to 10 jobs. And if it's a repeating job, or if any of those jobs are repeating jobs, it'll actually prompt you if you'd like to apply these changes to only the future jobs or on, only the selected jobs. So again, it, it'll, it, you know, it's smart enough to know where the changes should be propagated. All right, so we'll go ahead and say only selected job, apply. And uh, so now what we can do is we can go back and uh, reset our filters and uh, look at one of these jobs that we just, uh, just changed. So first of all, the substatuses have changed obviously and uh, the notes got updated. And so if we go back and we look at any of these other jobs, as you can tell, the substatuses have changed and uh, you know, if we pick any other random job, um, again, the notes for text would have been updated. So you know, once again, there's a lot of uses for this feature. You know, how you guys apply it, how you use it is up to you. Uh, but uh, again, we've, we've gotten quite a few compliments on it, so we're really, really excited about this one. And the uh, last thing I wanted to point out in, uh, in this release is that we uh, improved how uh, purchase orders and inventory orders are, are managed or created. So for instance, if you go into uh, the job section now, you uh, now have um, you know, easy access to the inventory management section. So we can go to purchase orders and we can see um, any purchase orders that are open or closed. I can search for purchase orders by, uh, by PO number, by vendor, by uh, you know, some other information, including products or uh, specific job numbers. And I can see if the uh, purchase order is closed, if it was converted into an inventory order. So it's always gonna show an IO number and then the number of that inventory order. So when you click on it, it'll actually take you to the inventory number, which will then cross-reference the purchase order number um, on it. So it's, it's a lot easier to find things now. You don't have to go into uh, you know, the My Office section and then go to POs and then go to inventory orders to you know, find them individually. Um, it, you know, again, now there's a reference between a job and a purchase order or a job and a purchase order and an inventory order and, um, and vice versa. So uh, again, just you know, quite a few changes that we made here. Um, great, great features that they once again um, have received some praise from our customers. So um, that's, uh, that's something that we're uh, definitely enjoying. Now, and, uh, one more thing that I wanted to point out in this um, update is uh, we added a preference where um, you can change how your multi-day jobs are displayed, for example. So uh, if we go down here inside the company preferences, there's a, a new setting called display multi-day jobs on calendar as, and then you have an option of doing it as a multi-day block or a, an individual daily blocks. So the individual daily blocks is how it has been, um, how the, how the multi-day jobs have been displayed up to this point. So if I save this preference here, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, open up our calendar view in, uh, in a separate window. So I'll just go to calendar and um, there's a multi-day job that's gonna span across uh, four days. So um, like here, here's the job, for example, and what, what, what it does now is it breaks it up into individual blocks and it places them on the calendar in the, uh, in the appropriate time window. So this job is from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., but this job is from 4.20 p.m. to 5.20 p.m. And so again, it places it in, in that particular time slot. Now, if we, uh, if we were to change this to the new setting or just a new way of displaying, um, that would be uh, multi-day blocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Now let's go ahead and um, update our calendar view. And you can see that the job is now stretching from the 25th to the 29th. So it's, um, it, it's just not, you know, again, it's not broken up into blocks. It's displayed at the top of the calendar for each day. And so you can more easily see how far, you know, how far out the jobs go basically on the calendar if you have a lot of multi-day jobs. Uh, once again, it's just something that uh, uh, quite a few of our customers requested. Um, and uh, we hope that you find this feature useful. Right before we end this um, uh, quick update, I wanted to share just a couple of things that we, uh, a couple of new improvements that we made to the Field Worker app. Uh, you know, first and foremost, photo uploads are now a lot easier to work with. You can now upload multiple photos at the same time. 
uh, you can you know queue them up you can basically snap a photo and while while it's uploading you can snap another one so you don't have to wait until you know this one photo is uploaded to you know to get the other one um, in the queue uh, we've also added a new feature that allow you to, allows you to scan uh, cards you can still input them manually but you can scan them more easily so uh, if that's something that you guys do out in the field, uh, should uh, probably shave at least uh, you know, 30, 40 seconds off your uh, credit card processing. And even the manual input form is a lot easier to work with now than it than it was before. Um, it it actually you know parses the number and it and it uh, eas more easily uh, allows you to navigate from uh, from the card number to the expiration date field. So again, you can just you know key key in the numbers and and, and move on uh, move on to the next step uh, more easily. And um, So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this update. We again look forward to uh, rolling out some more uh, exciting stuff uh, before the end of this month and uh, in, in the coming weeks. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But uh, we'll keep you posted with uh, these updates as well as uh, through our uh, knowledge base. If you just go to uh, help.servicefusion.com, right on the home page, you'll see under top articles all the all the feature releases, and uh, you can also see them down here under release notes. Uh, but be you know be sure to check this section out frequently and um, again if you, if you have any questions let us know we'll look forward to working with you